stand for the gospel. The gospel this morning is from John chapter 17. Jesus prays, Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that the scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word and the world has hated them for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. This is the gospel of our Lord. Grace and mercy and peace are yours from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Your fellow believers, what's really the matter with being a cowboy? Ever since I heard the song, why shouldn't mamas let their babies grow up to be cowboys? You understand that cowboys, at least the ones that work for the Pony Express, they lighten their horses so much so that they would have enough to take that load of mail, whatever the parcel was, from one post to the next. They had the need for speed, so they got rid of everything that was extraneous just so that they could take the mail as fast as possible. But the one thing, the one thing those cowboys would not, would not give up from the load on their horse this. This is an authentic replica copy of a Pony Express by mine. The old saying was those Pony Express cowboys had a colt on their one side and a Bible on the other as if they were fully equipped with those two things for whatever would face them in life. They had everything they needed. In fact, did you know that before they could be a Pony Express rider, they had to say an oath. This is the oath those cowboys had to say. I, state your name, do hereby swear before the great and living God that during my engagement and while I am an employee of Russell, Majors, and Waddell, I will under no circumstances use profane language. That I will not quarrel or fight with any other employee of the firm. And that in every respect I will conduct myself honestly, be faithful to my duties, and so direct my acts as to win the confidence of my employers. So help me God. Well, what's the matter with that? What's the matter with mamas letting their babies grow up to be cowboys if this is their attitude and if this is their strength? That's the case. I don't know that there's anything wrong with growing up to be a cowboy. It really has more to do with the attitude and the faith that somebody holds. And if that's the case, whatever the occupation your son or daughter chooses, maybe we should tweak that a little bit. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be without their Lord. Stephen's mother certainly didn't. She trained him in the Lord to know how to serve God and to serve his fellow people and to love life. There was a dispute that arose in the early Christian church and this had the ability to undermine the word and to lead people away from God himself. And so they had a need for speed to deal with this dispute between the Grecian Jews, the widows, and the Hebraic ones. The Hebraic widows were the ones that grew up in around Jerusalem 
And so they knew the area, they spoke the language. The Grecian Jews were outsiders who probably stayed in the Jerusalem area because of Christianity and they wanted to grow in their faith, but they didn't speak the language. They were kind of still outsiders. They didn't have the connections that the Hebraic Jews did. And so there was a dispute, a language barrier. There was a money barrier. The money wasn't being allocated correctly. And so these widows were being overlooked. This had a potential to be a big problem. And Stephen stepped forward. Did you notice? He was first in line of seven to be called to manage this and to take care of this. Integrity with money, integrity with the word, integrity with people. And the way they went about this method to get seven people to do this ministry wasn't, well, this kind of person isn't necessarily coming to church as faithfully as they should. Maybe if we give them this position, they'll come around a little bit more and maybe the, that person will grow up a little bit more and be more mature. No, the way they carried this out is they said, we want people already grown up in the Word. We want people who are already mature and showing it in their faith in life. Stephen's mother and father trained him to be full of the word of God and equipped with it. Just being seven years in the Southwest, meeting a number of cowboys down there, there are, there are a number of them who are just fantastic. Just people of integrity, old-fashioned values. Stephen is just like that. His parents trained him to know how to treat a lady. Notice he's not even serving his own mother. He's serving other people's mothers, other people's grandmothers. This kind of ministry was not beneath him. He wanted to care for people no matter what age or stage of life they were in. But the Bible makes a very strong point here. Stephen is not just somebody filled with old-fashioned values. He's somebody filled with the Spirit of God. His mother and father trained him right to serve the Lord and to serve people. And it says, not everybody in the Bible, by the way, especially in today's day and age, knows how to do that. Paul wrote this to another pastor later in his life. Mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. Boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with them. They are the kind who worm their way into homes and gain control over weak-willed women who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires. He doesn't mean that to offend. For instance, my grandma and grandpa were swindled in their old age in Florida out of thousands of dollars by a conning window salesman. There are times in life where people are most vulnerable, isn't it? And old age is kind of one of them. Where the elderly are looking to trust somebody. They need help with certain things. And now just imagine, they've lost their husbands. They're especially looking for help. And I imagine old age is one of those times, even at 40, I look back and I say, man, I wish I would have done that better. Lord, I feel guilty over these things. You, when you can reflect and look back at your life, especially in old age, it's a vulnerable time. And people are looking to take advantage. Stephen was a man of honesty and integrity who not only wanted to manage money well, he wanted to care for somebody in their body, the elderly, and do it with dignity and integrity and make sure they were being cared for physically. But that's not all. He wanted to make sure these widows were also cared for with integrity when it came to the word of God. He wanted to make sure they heard the forgiveness of sins, that they were cared for in their soul. Both body and soul to Stephen were important. And when some people rose up in opposition to the gospel and they were teaching something other than Jesus Christ for salvation, 
Stephen stood his ground. And he said this. You stiff-necked people, with uncircumcised hearts and ears, you are just like your fathers. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your fathers didn't persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you've betrayed and murdered him. You who have received the law that was put into effect through angels but have not obeyed it. Does that sound like sharp, strong words? I don't know that it gets sharper than that. Do you know who that sounds like? In all honesty? That sounds just like my mother. That sounds just like my father. That sounds just like my grandpa's and my grandma's. And my guess is, it probably sounds like many of yours as well. Do you know why? Because they didn't want their babies to grow up to be dirty, rotten scoundrels. And so just like Stephen, they stood in the truth. When we, growing up, wanted to play with sin. And they called us on it. Sometimes gently, and if we got bucky, if we got stubborn, if we were unwilling to repent and say often, well, she started it or it was their fault first, I'm in the right when we were still clearly in the wrong, they got rather sharp with us and held us accountable in our sin. They recognized something from the scripture, that the rejection of the word, failing to repent for sin, brings the damnation of the soul. Parents and mothers and fathers, especially of young children or grade school age children or high school age kids today, this section of scripture shouldn't just sound like your mother and father. It shouldn't just sound at times like your grandpas and grandmas. At times, this needs to sound like you. Otherwise, what are you training your babies to grow up to be? If you are training your kids to grow up in a life without consequences, to grow up thinking they can get away with whatever they want, and you're going to stand there and say, I'm going to count three, two, one, and when you get to zero, I'm going to count again. Three, two, one. Don't make me raise my voice. I'm getting serious now. If you're raising your kids without consequences, you are training them poorly and improperly because one day there's going to be one who when he counts down to that last day, he will hold our kids accountable. That's why we have consequences on earth. To let them see the seriousness of sin and just what Stephen was trying to help these people in his day to see. Sin is legitimate and real. It's in each and every one of our lives and every one of us needs to repent. Uh, but that's not where he ended and that's not where moms and dads need to end either. He said, Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Do you know why we stand for stuff? In the Old Testament, it says, stand in the presence of the aged and the elderly. Give them utmost respect. We just stood before. We stood for the gospel out of respect. These are Jesus' very own words. This is the Son of God who's ascended and at the right hand of God, and he sits there for us. He's the king of everything. And so we rise in respect to listen to his living words. Do you know in the past, kings of Europe used to take off their crowns when the gospel was read out of respect, recognizing they had a king who is superior to them, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so out of respect for Jesus' own words, we rise. Do you see what happened here? Stephen, after he preached the law, he said, look, I see heaven open and Jesus 
standing there. This wasn't just some vision in Stephen's own mind, something that he just saw right here. He invited the entire crowd of people to look up and to see Jesus in heaven wide open and to see the gospel himself. And Jesus stood for Stephen. Out of respect for Stephen, the Son of God stood. Why? Why would Jesus stand for him? Because Stephen was about to become the world's first Christian martyr. Stephen is about to become the world's first person to die, witnessing for the gospel and witnessing on behalf of Jesus Christ himself. And after he invited the entire crowd to see Jesus and to turn to him, they wouldn't look. And in stubbornness, they grabbed him, they dragged him out of the city, and they put an end to his life by throwing stones at him. Do you have moms and dads who helped you see Jesus? Do you have moms and dads who helped you see that this life is not the end, that this life is not what's most important, that there's something beyond, that after this world you are going to be with Jesus? Did they help you understand the gospel? Did they help you see how to deal with persecution, to pray for those who oppose you, to forgive those who stand against you, and to have confidence in the word of God? that Jesus is going to take you from this life to the next and he's going to bring your soul and you can have full confidence in his forgiveness and love? That's what Stephen had. And if you had a mom or dad like that, if you had a mom and dad, grandpa or grandma, who taught you who the Lord was and how to serve him, who taught you how to stand for the truth by recognizing sin in your life, and that you won't get away with it on earth or forever in heaven, and to repent and turn to Jesus who fully forgives all of your sin. If you had a mom and dad who taught you to see Jesus and that he wants you to be next to him in heaven and he's going to bring your soul there, then don't just thank God today for giving you a mom or a dad. Thank God for giving you a mom and dad. The kind of mom and dad that he wanted them to be. The kind of mom and dad that you needed them to be. Because they didn't allow their babies to grow up to be without their Lord. Amen. Please stand.